Hello guys, my name is Tom Antas and I'm very excited because in this video I'm gonna uh, get to test out the new Panasonic GH5 camera. So uh, I just got the camera and uh, well I got it actually two days ago but I've been too busy with other work so I'm literally just gonna unbox it right now with you guys and kind of put it together with some of the accessories I got for it. Kind of quickly I'll go over what I got. I got this uh, cage for it. It's like a new updated version from Came TV uh, that allows you to actually put the, the whole audio module here on the top and it has you know the top handles all that stuff. You can put rails on it and we're gonna need rails because I'm gonna be attaching different lenses with this this camera I'm gonna be testing out but I'm really excited to test out these lenses from SLR Magic which are anamorphic lenses these are actual anamorphic lenses that are i would say affordable anamorphic lenses because um you know if most of the anamorphic lenses uh, usually are either very expensive or if you get the ones that are, you know like i said the ones that are more for more kind of con consumer use they're not really real lenses they're just adapters uh, that kind of convert you know um regular lenses into anamorphics so this one like i said these ones are actually all in one so you don't have that problem with the back focusing and all that stuff but how good are, are they? I really don't know because I haven't used them yet. But uh, the reason why I want to use it with this camera is because they're actually made for the Mic Micro Four Thirds image sensor. Uh, and the GH5, just like the GH4, uh, is actually really the only cameras out there or the only consumer cameras that shoot anamorphic mode. So that's another exciting thing. Plus, this camera shoots uh, in higher bit rate and higher frame rates and all that stuff. But along with that, I'm also going to put um, the Ninja Inferno from Atomos. And this thing is, is kind of in a way made, I would say, almost specifically for this camera. I mean, you can use it with other cameras. It's just, you know, HDMI input. But what's supposed to be cool about it is that it allows you to record the higher, uh, basically, bit rates without, you know, um, using the, the really expensive SD cards. Also, you get other, like, monitoring, you know, tools and things like that. You get a bigger display. Plus, when you're shooting uh, with anamorphic lenses, especially, you get to de-squeeze it real time so you can really see what your composition is like. But anyways, let me start putting this camera together. Uh, and let's see, let's see how it performs. All right, how do you get to this box? <laughs> Got the manuals, who need those? And there's the camera. Hmm, all right, nicely packaged. All right, I think I can put this away. Or actually, no, let me take out the batteries. And maybe I should actually put those batteries to charge first because uh, I do want to go shooting with it. Although, uh, it actually uses the same batteries as the GH4, so that's a good thing. It's, I have a, a whole bunch of GH4 batteries, so I can, I can use those. Let me just clean up up here, and... Well, there's the camera. <laughs> Very similar in a way to the GH4. Has a nice flip-out screen. Um, I think it's a little bit bigger. I mean, may maybe, but like a... Either I'm imagining that or it's a little bit bigger. But one thing I noticed right away is it said uh, they changed up some of the buttons here in the back. And one thing I like actually, feels really nice and I think it's, it might be good for navigating the menu. I hope that's what it's for. Is the little, like little thumbstick they put on the back. So you can kind of, you know, move it up and down, left and right. But otherwise, yeah, it looks looks quite similar actually to the GH4. Battery still is on the bottom. Wish they would have changed that down on the side. Sometimes it just makes it easier to get to the battery. The card reader here is on the on the right side. Now it has the dual uh, card slot, so that's a good thing. And here we have the HDMI's, headphone connections. Oh, and um, yeah, this is actually something I was really ex you know looking forward to. It has the full HDMI connection, none of that micro HDMI nonsense, which just it's so flimsy and it really does not like if you want to use this camera professionally, especially with an external recorder. Relying on that micro HDMI was a nightmare. That was the reason why most of the time with my GH4 I didn't really bother recording on an external recorder Even though I could get 10 bits out of it is because when I did try it The micro HDMI was so flimsy a lot of times that it would just cut out and I would lose the shot altogether. So So anyways, uh, let me first put it on this cage So this cage kind of slides out from the uh, From basically from the side it has like a little safety here bolt so it shouldn't go the other way so it only comes out the one way seems pretty secure and this thing i guess is only you, you would need it if you want to use the rails because you you're going to put the rails through there but if you don't need the rails you can just put the the tripod directly 
to the bottom of the cage itself. The cage is actually very light, I like that. Now one thing I noticed is that you can't really remove the handle. Like, um, like on my GH4, I also am using a cage from um, KMTV. What I love about it is that it's, uh, you know, the same kind of material, light and everything, but you can easily remove the, the top handle. I wish KMTV had done that, but I guess the reason why it was difficult is because they had to move the handle. I'm guessing well, that's why, because uh, to clear the extra space here for the, the audio adapter in case you have it. I didn't get it. I'm not going to be really recording audio, uh, you know, with the GH4. I usually do kind of more cinematic stuff. Now, if I was doing you know, audio recording for like, you know, like let's say interviews or something, then that would definitely be something I would want to have. Uh, but because, like I said, if I'm working on the films or something like that, then, uh, or music videos, I'm not going to be recording any audio. And on films, I always have an audio guy who records the audio, you know, externally. Uh, but anyway, so let me just put this right now. Here's the little bolt uh, to the, that you at use to attach to the, the camera. The Cam TV puts it on the cage. But anyways, let's put the camera here. And tight and it's always double check that the camera is sitting in there well and, and right away what I do like is that you can see the the cage here on the front and uh, it has basically like these kind of guards to make sure that the camera is not going to be uh, sort of you know rotating within the cage and that's very important especially when you're putting heavy lenses like these anamorphics you don't want the camera to be kind of tilting or twisting uh, yet at the same time I do like like I said that it has uh, all the access here to the all these things, you know, the battery, the, the, the card battery here on the bottom. Uh, let's see, yeah, we can open it, no problem. Um, and like I said, I, I don't have the audio module to test it out, which is, th that's where you would attach it. But for what I heard from uh, KMTV is that's why they did the handle kind of extended it forward is because the module goes here, the audio module, and then this way it clears it. So it's pretty cool. Now I'm going to put actually the bottom here and I'm going to put the rails. And the reason is because like I said, with these lenses, they're quite, you know, heavy and I want to put lens support. And then with these lenses also, you know, I want to put a, a matte pack so I can put my full size cinema, basically uh, filters like, you know, NDs and things like that. All right. So I got the matte packs here ready, my lens support, follow focus. I'll just put all these aside. The rails, I'll put these in. The cage, well, depends. You can buy the cage by itself from KMTV or you can buy it with the rails. So it's up to you. Got this rail in there. I'm going to put the shoulder support too. So I'm going to leave some. That's why I'm using these like extra long rails. You don't normally, you don't need that. Now, one thing I like about this cage is that you just have one knob here for tightening both of the rails. So. I tighten this actually tightens both left and right rail so that's good now i'm going to put actually this shoulder pad because i might be doing some sort of handheld over the shoulder kind of shooting again i can fine-tune the placement of this later let's see okay i think this will be good somewhere there i got three lenses here the 70 uh 50 and 35 so maybe usually i go with the 50 i like using that so let me try the 50. Now SLR Magic actually provided this to me too. It's like their own lens support, I guess. And they, yeah, they, they did say that I pretty much want to make sure that I'm always using this because the lenses are very front heavy. So put it somewhere there. Well, <laughs> definitely now it's much bigger and heavier uh, of a camera, but that's what you got to do sometimes if you want to have nice cinematic shots. Now, like I said, I'm probably going to put the uh, mat packs in here because that will be going outside shooting and I definitely want to be able to use my filters. And because this is like a, like a standard cinema front thread and I'm going to put my follow focus. This is actually all from Came TV, the mat packs and the follow focus. It's the, you can get it as, as a whole kit basically. So you get the, the cage rails, all that stuff. Or you can just get the cage. Let's make sure this aligns with the lens. Yep, it works. You can move the lens. All right. Okay, almost done. Uh, next thing I want to do is uh, attach my Atomos Ninja Inferno so that I can I can properly view my shots. So let's take out the Ninja Inferno. Oh, that new smell. 
Ah, <laughs> smells like plastic actually. <laughs> It's always nice when you see a new piece of gear, not scratched. Yeah, I like this this uh, uh, this monitor. It's uh, they've kind of made it lighter now, and I can see it has the built-in bumpers. That's cool. Now the fact that it's a little bit lighter is always better because it means it's less weight to have to carry. So let's see. Uh, this is just a power adapter and nothing really else. So I have to get my own batteries and I have to get the, the magic arm to attach it. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've got her built up. As you guys can see, definitely the small camera can easily turn into a monster rig. Uh, I don't know how much this weighs. Maybe I'll actually weigh it after and let you guys know. But and I'm going to go out, get some shots uh, and show it to you guys right now. Uh, and right after that, I'll be back and kind of give you my, my final thoughts on this, on, the, on, on this sort of a initial test that I'm doing up here. If you guys want to see the full video I shot with the GH5, then just follow the link at the end of this video. So after shooting with the GH5, so far, here's what I've noticed. Uh, it's a slightly larger camera than the GH4, uh, which I like because it, you know, it means it's easier to handle. I also love the new button layout and the little uh, thumbstick at the back for uh, navigating the menus. The full-size HDMI connection is great and sturdy. Also, the LCD screen is actually larger and it's easier to uh, because of it to nail focus and just see what you're doing plus it's really visible uh, outside in daylight uh, which is great because uh, this camera also has pro tools such as uh, waveform monitor and vector scope uh, now you know these are features that you normally only see in expensive professional video cameras or, or monitors that cost a lot more than the gh5 uh, now as far as the image quality i'm, I'm loving what i've seen so far uh, i've only shot in 4k anamorphic uh, 4x3 aspect ratio at 24 and 60 frames per second and that was in Cine like D and uh, now just the fact that this cheap little camera can do that and uh, you know that, that in itself is pretty amazing I will also be doing more tests uh, and and uh, in other image profile modes and uh, other frame rates including the super slow motion at 180 frames per second uh, plus I'll be testing out the, the autofocus you know dynamic range colors etc but anyways the quality I got so far right now is, uh, is really you know blowing me away so I'm back uh, I had to sort of cut the day a little bit earlier than I wanted to because I had some problems with the batteries uh, Literally, the batteries for the Ninja Inferno, it, uh, they died a lot quicker than I expected. And I thought I had extra batteries. I bought these bigger Sony MPF ba batteries, but unfortunately, they weren't charged. I thought they were, but uh, so <laughs> definitely going to make sure I'm charging all of these batteries for tomorrow. But as a backup, I'm also going to take some uh, V-mount batteries um, and to, you know, power it. I'm going to just use this LEN port. The battery plate that I can attach using you know, using the basic the 50 millimeter rails here in the back, and this will actually also help me with the other slight problem I saw with the, this rig, which is uh, basically it's too front heavy, so it's kind of uncomfortable holding it, you know, for kind of getting over the shoulder over the shoulder shots. Whereas by putting the battery in the back, I think that's gonna fix that that problem. But otherwise, I'm loving so far what I've seen. Uh, you know, just working with it is nice. Also, being able to like shoot anamorphic and see properly the D squeezed, you know, e image and seeing the sharpness, all that stuff. Uh, it's really nice. Um, you know, quality of the display is nice. The kind of shots and colors, and also the control that the GH5 allows you to have was really nice. So so far, like I said, good experience in that sense. Just have to solve the battery solution so i'm gonna go out shoot some more tests and uh, just keep you guys updated so i'm definitely going to be releasing a whole bunch of videos about the gh5 my setup kind of how i tweak this whole thing i actually have some other cage to test out and accessories review of the ninja inferno and and basically you know everything that you want to know about the gh5 uh, also i'm actually releasing a series of filmmaking tutorials where i show you guys how i recreated uh, famous movie scenes uh, literally in my living room uh, and how you guys can do it just literally follow me step by step uh, and uh, the first video actually is going to come out in a couple of days this week so if you guys don't want to you know miss those videos make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel but also uh, as always go to my website tomatosfilms.com and subscribe to the newsletter uh, so you're notified when those videos come out uh, anyways thank you guys and uh, i'll see you in in, uh, in, a, in a couple of days